Dear students, now we are in part 3 of software metrics for software design architecture. Uh, previously, we have been looking at weighted method per class. We have also looked at uh, the first two uh, metrics for coupling between objects. Uh, these two CBO metrics are CBO between packages and banning. Today, we are going to look at message passing coupling as a CBO metric. Now, what is MPC? MPC represents coupling through message passing between classes. Message passing is indicated by a method call. Let's look at the example below. We have two classes there. The classes are borrower and loan. Now, inside class borrower, what's the WMC? Weight the method per class, given the weight 1. Yes? The answer is 2. Because inside borrower, we have method check borrower and method record loan. So there are two methods there. How about WMC for loan? That's right. It's 2. Now, how about MPC, message passing, with, uh, message passing coupling. MPC is between two classes. And then we determine MPC for borrower and MPC for loan respectively. They are separate. So MPC for borrower here is 1. And MPC for loan is also 1. How do I know that they are 1? Look at between borrower and loan. MPC for borrower is 1 because MPC borrower is only calling one time which is uh, check out method inside loan. It's calling only one method inside loan. So that is 1. Any more? No more, right? How about MPC for loan? Loan is calling one method from inside borrower which is record loan. Only one, right? Therefore, MPC for loan is also 1. Now, look at the answers there. MPC, CBO, wait. What's the difference? What's the relationship between MPC and CBO? MPC is a type of CBO. As I mentioned before, there are multiple types of CBO. We have CBO abstract data type. We have CBO inheritance. We have CBO fan. We have CBO package. And MPC is just one of the CBOs by calculating, sorry, by counting the number of method calls. Next. Let's try MPC, let's try to determine MPC for each of the following, class A, class B, and class C. There are more than two classes here. Don't worry, you just look at the relationship between two classes. We don't care about the other third class. Just always between two. For MPC of class A, how many method, outgoing method call there? How many outgoing arrows there? Only one. So MPC for class A is one. How about class B? You see class B? MPC from class B. How many outgoing arrows? How many outgoing arrows between B and A? One, two. How about between B and C? Only one. So, what is the MPC of B? We just call, we just count the outgoing arrows. Three. One, two, three. So, MPC of B is one, two, three. How about C? Easy. Just count the arrows from, uh, outgoing arrows from C. Okay? And there are only two of them. So, MPC of C is two. So, I think that actually uh, illustrates MPC pretty clearly. Let's move on to another type of CBO. Previously, we have looked at MPC as a CBO technique. Now we are looking at DIT as CBO technique. What's the difference between DIT and MPC? MPC is between two different classes, sibling classes, or maybe uh, two different classes, different trees. But DIT, that of inheritance tree, 
Our relationship between father, son, mother, daughter is superclass and subclass. So it is a vertical relationship. So what does DIT show? High DIT means there are many many levels. Many 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 levels uh, of subclassing. It shows a lot of reels. But it also shows that this design will require will probably require a lot of maintenance because one change anywhere in the level will affect others. Especially higher changes at the higher classes will affect its subclasses. Um, what's the rule of the thumb? The rule of the thumb says uh, the DIT should be between two and four. Uh, two and six. It's higher than six, you need more testing. How about less than two? If less than two means only one, right? That means there is only one class, no inheritance. So it cannot be less than two. Yeah, it should be two or higher for DIT to be counted. Let's look at example. Now, how do we count the levels? Remember that uh, uh, tree in ICT or computer science is an upside down tree? Because the root is at the top, for a natural tree, a real tree, a biological tree, botanical tree, the root is at the bottom inside the soil, right? So it's bottom up, but the tree in computer science is top down. Uh, so the root here is holding, all right, followed by loan, copy items, these are the tweaks, and then the leaf are long, short, dash, shape music, journal article. Now, we can count the levels there, starting from the root. The root is given number zero, level zero. So one level down is level one, loan and copy item. And the next level is comprising printed material, recorded material, sheet music, journal article. And that is level number two. You have got it, level number two. So you start with zero. You come by starting with level zero, level one, look at the mouse, level two. Pretty easy, huh? How about recorded material? Level 2. How about um, um, long? Long class. Long class here, right? So count again. Level 0, level 1, level 2, level 3. So the IT for long is 3. Similarly for short and dash, the other ITs are 3. The other type is number of children. Number of children is pretty easy. You just count of each class the number of subclasses. Higher number of children indicates high reusability. Also means more testing. This is because having more children in a class indicates more responsibility. If I change this class, all the children will be affected. It also indicates whether a class is popular or not. If it has a lot of children, that class is popular. Now let's look at this example. What's the NLC of loan? First, find where loan class is, and then find the subclasses, and count the number of subclasses. There are only two of them. See? Pretty easy, huh? Moving on to another metric, which is still under CBO, coupling between objects. Yeah, we have, uh, we have learned about uh, CBO package, CBO MPC, um, we have learned about CBO uh, abstract data type. I'm not going deep into abstract data type. Yeah, I, I just touch the surface. Uh, we have a CBO for DIT, CBO for NOC, and now we are going for CBO using RFC, response for a class. So, response for a class requires you to understand what um, uh, WMC is, requires you to understand uh, um, message passing, coupling, MPC. You also need to recall uh, inheritance because really RFC is making use of the previous metrics. So the key point here, you look at uh, point number two and point number three, it says here RFC there are two types RFC through inheritance and RFC through message passing. Now these two are quite similar. Okay, RFC for inheritance, let's look at point number two, it's just taking weighted method per class plus DIT. Yeah. Sorry, uh, not DIT. 
uh, uh, is, is number of methods inherited. Yeah, WMC plus number of methods inherited. That's it. All right. Inherited is always from superclass, yeah, not subclass. Um, it does not count if the inherited class is overridden by the the method inside that class already. So, for point number two, RMC inheritance is WMC plus inherited method. That's it. This is the point that you must remember. The other type of RMC is, is RMC message passing. Again, the formula is pretty si similar. You have weighted method per class plus weighted method per class plus number of MPC. Yeah, number of MPC. So, if you compare RFC inheritance and RFCs, RFC message passing, they are quite similar, right? Both are using WMCs. The only difference is that inheritance is counting the inherited methods in uh, RFC message passing is counting MPC on top of WMC, right? So, again, uh, similarly, higher RFC means uh, higher complexity, uh, more impact, more reusability, more responsibility. If you want to do changes, there will be a ripple effect. It may cause other class to be affected if you modify this class. Uh, this is called ripple effect because if, you, if uh, class A is using class B, if you change class B, of course, class A is affected. Let's say there's another class called class Z, which is using class A. Since C, B is changed, now A is also changed. Thus, Z is affected. This is what we call ripple effect. Uh, how to handle this? more testing or you redesign make it simpler if you cannot redesign to make it simpler because the requirement requires it to be this complex do a lot of testing let's look at one example what's rfc wait you must tell us rfc inheritance or rfc mpc yeah you must be clear about that in this example is rfc inheritance so rfc inheritance for that let's find where that is that is at the bottom here. You see my, my mouse pointer? Now, the RFC is determined by counting the number of uh, weighted method per class WMC. How many here? There are two of them, right? Plus, plus the inherited method from the top, from the superclass. So we have a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Uh, this one cannot count because it's already overwritten over here, here so back to six six seven eight so the rfc for that is uh eight okay be careful of overridden method yeah um let's look at this uh example rfc inheritance of sheet music it's given nine right so how do you count here go go to the class for sheet music count the weighted method with class there there are only three of them, right? So how about inherited one? One, two, three, four, five, six. How about this? These two, why are they crossed out? Because they have been overridden. Okurai holding has been overridden by this method. Display details also has been overridden. We don't count overridden method. We just count the inherited one plus WMC. So in all you have uh, nine. That's how you count it, all right? This one is, a, is the other RFC, not RFC inheritance, but RFC message passing. For class A, you count the existing methods inside it, 1, 2, 3. And how many outgoing arrow? Only one, right? It's called M4 of MB, uh, of class B, right? So, 3 plus 3 plus 1, 4. How about RFC for class B? First, count the number of methods inside already, which is M4, M5. Two of them, plus outgoing arrow, only 1, 2 plus 1, 3. So, that's it, folks. It's quite easy to determine... WMC, uh, uh, it's quite easy to determine RFC message passing. So now make, make sure you remember the difference between RFC inheritance and RFC message passing. Uh, in the next uh, part, part 4, we'll be looking at more metrics. Stay tuned.